The Long Way Up. Everybody has been talking about it, at least everybody in the motorcycling community. And let's be honest, they have been for some years now. Every now and again it popped up and no one really thought much about it, as it was mostly put down to either excited fans getting the wrong end of the stick, or for the negative people, it was Charlie trying to keep his career alive. But in an interview with Charlie in the middle of 2019, it was confirmed that it was happening. And not only that, it was only months away and there would be a twist. Everyone got excited and there were all sorts of rumors around what that twist would be. Everyone was guessing that from they were gonna do it in trucks or cars, or there was talk of hitchhiking along the lines of Charlie's by any means series. But the twist was revealed yesterday. The long way up is an all electric affair. Charlie and Ewan will be riding Harley Davidson live wires and the crew are in Rivian pickup trucks. It's fair to say that if you had a bet on electric vehicles for this trip, then you would have got some pretty amazing odds. So now we know that the trip is all electric, let's take a quick look at what we think that means for the long awaited long way up. The first thing everyone is talking about is the range of the bikes. Well, currently, Harley-Davidson quote, the live wire is having a range of 140 miles or 225 kilometers. Now that's the manufacturer's figures, so it is unlikely that they'll get that range when they aren't in prime condition. And don't forget, cold and heat can massively affect battery range. So how does that compare to say, the new BMW 1250 GS Adventure? Well, ignoring the manufacturer figures, most riders seem to be getting around 300 and 310 miles or about 500 kilometers. That's a big difference. And not only because you can go twice as far in a BMW, but also because refueling a petrol bike takes five minutes and a full charge of the live wire takes about an hour. Now let's do some maths. The Pan American Highway is the guy's most likely route and it's around 19,000 miles or 30,000 kilometers. Traveling at an average speed of say 60 miles an hour and with each charge lasting hopefully 120 miles, they should get about two hours of riding per charge with each charge taking an hour. Of course you can start the day fully charged and end the day with no charge left, so how far can they go in 12 hours? Well, with two hours riding, then an hour charging, you're looking at 480 miles a day, which actually isn't that bad. In fact, it would only take 40 days to do the Pan American Highway, and that's totally doable. But wait, I hear the naysayers cry. What about all the filming time? Well, yes, filming takes up a lot of riding time, and we should know, but, what is also true is that most of the interesting things happen while you're off the bike. The best stories, the people you meet, it all happens when you aren't riding. And the riding really is just a link between the interesting things that happen. And with four hours of forced charging a day, it gives you loads of filming time too. In fact, this is looking better and better. You can make good distance, you've worked in filming and rest times, and it's all good for the environment isn't it? Well, there might be a catch. As well as the electric bikes and Rivians, they also seem to have two Mercedes Sprinter vans and a Ford 150 with a trailer. This means that in all likelihood, they will not be doing the stop and charge method all the time. Harley have actually provided four live wires, which could just be two spares, but it looks to us like it's two bikes that can be charged in the vans while the other two are ridden. This means putting a bit of a crimp on their eco credibility However, it is the only real option at the moment for covering the large salt flat areas. The other reason for this will be the lack of a charging location. In the USA, it's no issue as they have almost 22,000 locations, whereas Chile has just 10 and Argentina has just one, according to openchargemap.org. So what about the show itself? Well, with four bikes, with two that are clearly spares or to be swapped with, it looks like there may be no Claudio or at least he won't be riding with them. And let's be honest, he was a big part of the original two shows. But if there's no cameraman riding and they need to stay close to the crew for charging, it looks like the bikes going off on their own for a few days at a time may also not be happening. The live wires are not in any way built to go off-road, which really turns the series into a road trip more than a classic adventure. All in all, this means a very different direction for the TV series. Many will moan and say, it's not a true motorcycle adventure, but in all honesty, was it ever that? It is and always has been an entertaining TV series, which appeals to everybody, not just the hardcore 
motorcycle adventurer. And it may be different, but we are looking forward to it all the same. What do you think? Please let us know in the comments below, and if you can, like and share.